Hello everyone. It's really good to see you again for today's vlog. Yesterday we read about the fall of Jerusalem and the exile of the people of Babylon, which means that we've completed most of the history of Israel and have just 10 sessions left in the Old Testament. Now I'm sure you remember that we Christians have inherited the Old Testament from the Jews. They don't have a New Testament, so they call these books the Law, the Prophets and the Writing. The Law are the first five books, which we often call the Pentateuch. The Prophets, they divide into two. The former Prophets, which would be our history books, and the latter Prophets, which would be the Prophets as we understand them, those books written by individual Prophets. And then finally, at the end of their Bible, but in the middle of our Old Testament, they have the writings, which include the Psalms and the Proverbs, which we're going to look at over the next five days. I'm a very happy lady because you know what? I've got Psalm 23, one of the most lovely pieces of writing ever created. It reminds me of what my father in, late father-in-law would say, it's gorgeous. And it's so profound yet accessible. It's truly amazing. So let's not waste any more time. Let's read it. You might even like to close your eyes and let the words flow to you. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Good Shepherd, we come to you today and thank you that you are such a wonderful God. Thank you for these wonderful words written about 3,000 years ago and yet still relevant to us today. O oh Lord, give us ears to hear, eyes to see and hearts to receive. From you we pray. Amen. This is a psalm full of imagery, sheep and shepherds and hosts and a guest. But what's the theme? What binds the whole psalm together? We begin with the picture of sheep needing short grass and still waters and a shepherd who knows that he needs to help the sheep to find these and leading them and providing. We come through a valley and out to a table groaning under the food and a, an a overflowing cup and someone who's provided this for the tired warrior. This is a psalm about a relationship, a relationship of a life lived with a God who provides. It's a very, very strong relationship for it lasts through the, through the sheep wandering from the path and the shepherd not throwing up his hands in horror but providing restoration and a leading in a path of righteousness. It lasts through the valley of the deep and dark ravine where the shepherd's rod keeps the sheep from falling off the edge and into the raging torrent. It moves from the third person, he leads, to the second person, you are with me. This relationship just gets stronger. It's a relationship that is there in the worst of places, 
with all the resources there to help us, whatever. David is saying, we have a God who cares for us 100%. Often we feel the darkness and the terror, but it's good to say with this psalm, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. This binds the psalm together. And when you feel at your lowest ebb, say these words and say them out loud. For this psalm then moves us out into the light as children of the light, leaving behind the, sh the shepherd metaphor and off into the future. Now, I'm sure you've heard preachers talk of Christians living in the time that is now and not yet. But what do they mean by this? Well, they're talking about the fact that for us as believers, Jesus has beaten sin and death by giving his life for us on the cross. And when we put our trust in him and walk with him, we have a certain hope of resurrection and a home in heaven that feast that's laid before us, the oil and the cup that overflows. But we're still living in the sinful world. We still have death as an ever-present horror. And we still need to reflect with David that goodness and mercy will follow us, even if we're in the dark valley. And it, we will be brought to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. Now, many of you will know that in the dim and distant past, I was a teacher. So I thought for a bit of a change, I'd set you some homework, things to, to do when the vlog is over. So I've got seven things. You choose what you want to do. I'm a generous teacher. Now, today is Ash Wednesday and it's the start of Lent. That's if you're watching these vlogs in the right order. Now, don't just make Lent a time to give up. Make it a time to take on and do. Darren has already suggested to us in Kimmel Bay that we should make Lent a time of special prayer. And I'd like to suggest to you that we could make Lent a time to reach Psalm 23 every day. Dwelling on it getting really to know it, getting under the skin of it. And this brings me to number two. Learn the psalm. If you don't know it already, learn it. And if you haven't learned it already, if you have learned it, then revise it. Always good to have scripture that we know. Maybe you're the sort of person who really benefits from listening to words and music. And Psalm 23 is a rich psalm for this. There are many, many different settings, from the classical by Schubert or Rutter or Goodall, to modern settings by Townsend and others. And then there's the old psalms that some of us remember and love. Choose your favourite, listen to them, or listen to a mixture. We haven't had time to look at the other places in the Bible where God is seen as the shepherd. So here's another, number four. Have a look in your Bible for other places where God is a shepherd or a host. And for a start off, you could try Ezekiel 34 or John chapter 10. Perhaps you're a visual person. So your um, homework might be much more this. Take time to look at the sheep in the fields round about and if you're really fortunate at the shepherd with them. There are images on our catch up and website to look at sheep and shepherd. Or you could try the old fashioned way and get a book and look at them there. Meditate on the, the workings of a sheep, shepherd and his sheep. Perhaps you're a creative person. Well, write out this psalm. Decorate it, colour it, make it beautiful. There's something wonderful about copying out the words of scripture. And finally, the Essential 100 talks of a mum 
who gave her son the words of Psalm 23 to help him when he was in dire trouble, and it did so. I remember my own son reading this beautiful psalm at my father's funeral because it was a, a piece of scripture my father truly understood. Sitting in the congregation was someone who struggled to understand the Bible, but he read and reread this psalm and truly it began to change his life. Who could you give this psalm to that it might help them in their quest to find Jesus? Or maybe to, to go through a bad period, it might help them to, to do that. There, things to do going forward. Enjoy. See you soon. Bye.